today I'm going to be talking about the movie that caused me to have a severe fear of spiders. And, directly enough, it's called arachnophobia, which is about these group of entomologists who travel into the jungle looking for new species, as entomologists do, and they discover this spider who apparently can't really, I guess, produce, like, offspring, like, it basically has, like, no like sex like sex organs which you're like that's kind of fucking weird and there's another species that's like related to uh, this like or type of spider that ends up killing one of the guys with just one bite and that is fucking terrifying you're like a black widow spider i mean like the chances of dying from that can be lower, can be high, it depends on your immune system and all sorts of stuff if the spider is young and just releases all the venom or an adult. Anywho, so they inadvertently bring the spider back to the United States and it wreaks havoc on this small town. It's really scary because like the spider mates with regular spider and then also there's like a shit ton of his little, little fuckers around. And the ways that they kill the people, I mean, I still, I think I remember this one scene where this couple was just sitting on the couch, seemingly normal, however their eyes were glazed and this spider crawled out of one of their noses. When I saw that part, I of course was very fucking terrified. I mean, it was a strange, you know, seeing a fucking bug crawl out of someone's nose, especially, I mean, I don't know what's worse, seeing that crawl out of someone who's alive or dead. And just this thing's really terrifying because like I said, it only takes one bite for it to kill you. That's the most scary part. And it hides in clever places like in someone's shoes. And I'm still paranoid about spiders or insects being in my shoes. So like whenever I feel something pinch my feet, I'm like, this is it, man. I'm going to die from a spider on my fucking shoe. Oh, what a way to go. What a way to fucking go. And I'm not gonna spoil the ending because, well, I want you guys to see it. And although it was made in 1990, it was really well made. I mean, again, I watched most of this shit when I was younger, but it really had a lasting impact on me. And I don't think back then I was as scared of spires, but after that movie, I kind of developed a fear. Guess the same thing with watching it after that, I kind of... <laughs> became terrified of clowns. I think even before then I was a little anxious. Anyway, sorry guys, I'm getting off topic, but yep. I mean, imagine a spider that can just kill you with one fucking bite. I mean, of course it was in the rainforest or like wherever you call it in a different country. Okay. In a different country, um, it's kind of interesting how a lot of that scary shit is found and, I mean, not just Australia, but in South America and other countries like that. In America, of course, we have a few deadly spiders, like the brown recluse that deteriorates your skin if it bites you to Black Widow. I don't know if Europe has Black Widow species or not. And then of course we have rattlesnakes and coral snakes, those fuckers. Even though they have really tiny mouths, I mean, if you live in Texas or anywhere where it's really warm, we get a lot of that shit in the summer. 
because Texas obviously state that's known for it being very fucking hot. Gets up to 80s, 90s, sometimes in the hundreds. You see like snakes, just especially huge. We've got big ass snakes here. I mean, not as big as a python, but still, they're impressively fucking ginormous. It's just insane how big they can get. Anyway, sorry, I lost, I guess, track of what I was talking about. I mean, when I was talking about arachnophobia with the poisonous spark thing, like I said, there's not, I mean, it's one of those movies that there's not that much to go on, like, other than the fact that people are dropping like flies and they, at first, have no idea what's causing this. Like, it's a whole new thing. I mean, obviously, they're going to not assume it's a spider bite because it's like, for real? They probably never ran into anything like that, let alone in America, finding something that's that deadly. And I really liked it and found it kind of ironic that two of the characters have arachnophobia. I'm not going to say anything more about that, but I just appreciate that. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know what else to say about the movie other than it was very, very nicely shot, especially in the rainforest. I mean, that was pretty cool. Like when you're just exploring like different areas, finding new species. Although, uh, that was, I mean, really freaky whenever they found that thing. Like, gosh damn. It is terrifying. And what's also scary about is that the spider isn't, like, ginormous. It's... I guess maybe a little bigger than the average spider, maybe small. And I mean, that's the things you should really watch out for, man, because if you see a big ass spider, be like, oh, yeah, that's a big ass spider. I'm going to stay away from it. But if it's something that's smaller that you can't really see, I mean, that's what makes it scarier because it can hide in any corner between any like cracks in the walls. It can just go anywhere fucking please. And you wouldn't even know how to. Like, find that thing. I mean, of course, like, spiders have to eventually lay nests and you're able to locate all that stuff. Still, I mean, just having to run around trying to figure out it, taking a while. I mean, it feels like in a lot of horror movies, which I kind of like in some of them, it takes the main characters a long time to figure out what's haunting them, what's killing them. I think sometimes they figure out right off the bat or less than half going to, like, storyline. I think it really depends on how long the movie is and how they can space out different things. Like, some movies can get away with being a slow burn, like When Animals Dream. Others, I mean, if you, like, do that, it would seem really, I guess, boring? In a sense, I mean, it just, it's interesting how there's a lot of horror movies, especially that are pretty unique. Although, like I've mentioned before, a lot of times, a lot of that shit's becoming more and more generic. And it's like, seriously, y'all need to come up with new stuff. I mean, no, it'd probably be hard because there's so many ideas that have already been done. I mean, it's really difficult to find like a unique concept to the horror genre because most likely is probably already done either as a b-ray movie or something that's a lot like has a lot more quality but yeah i mean i was impressive for acrophobia i mean of course it scared me which like i've said a lot of times before a good horror movie should scare the absolute heck out of you and still give you flashbacks <laughs> to the moment when it happened. But if I watched it again, I probably wouldn't be scared because it would seem really cheesy, just the idea. However, it was nicely done. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, say more about it. All right, shall we go? And I'll see you guys on Friday. 
Also, the offer still stands. If I get one more subscriber, I'm going to review The Exorcist on either Friday or Monday. Maybe Friday, but if I get that one extra subscriber before Wednesday or... Actually, no, fuck, I'll just do it, like... Mm, yeah, by Friday, I'll review it. I'll watch it the night before, and then, yeah. So, I just need one more subscriber, guys, and I will watch that. I know I'm saying the bar too low, but... I mean, I just gotta take baby steps to entice you guys, you know, just, just baby steps. I'm not gonna ask for too much right off the bat, I'm just gonna slowly ease you guys into it. Alright, I think I've talked enough for today, and I'll see y'all on Friday.